This is my room full of tens of thousands of amazing collectibles. We've been sorting through it all week. I cannot wait to get it all organized. Hello, my YouTube friend. We're back in the office. Ooh, it's been a crazy week. We've done a lot of sorting. We got a lot done, but we have a lot more to do. Uh, yesterday, I was exhausted, so I didn't film. I did move some stuff around, so I want to give you an update of what I've done so far. Okay, from the back area, I actually I moved a couple of columns right here. We need to get through these, though, because I feel like this whole area is kind of cluttered now. And I want to just open it up so I can really sort. Um, but the reason why I moved these was to make some space right here. I moved all the subscription boxes, which I don't know if we'll get to them today because I really want to get these columns. Uh, possibly, though. I still have the table. We moved back here. And then I started moving some of the boxes from the back corner. And as you can see, I rotated the shelf over. And, uh, yeah... <laughs> This is the back secret corner, my older collection. Got some boxes kind of falling over up there. Uh, I think later today, once we do the two columns, I'm going to rip that plastic down and we're going to take a quick peek of what's in there. Uh, but first, I want to show you a Ziggy item I found. All right, inside this box, I found probably one of my biggest Ziggy Grail items in my collection. And you know how big my Ziggy collection is. So when I say it's a Grail item, I mean this is... A literal grail item this is a like the kind of item if it wasn't ziggy if it was superman would be like a million dollars um it's not ziggy though that's one reason why i really started collecting ziggy because it was a childhood favorite but i could afford the grails i think i paid 400 dollars for this about 15 years ago i don't know what it would sell for today i don't care there's no price if someone offered me 10 grand i it would i wouldn't take it because it's a grail all right let's go it's in this box right here, which is a lot of Ziggy stuff. Uh, we have a cute little sticker. We have lots of little cheap items. But this right here, this is the Grail Ziggy item. There's not many more items that are a bigger Grail than this. Uh, so this is the original artwork from July 3rd, 1971. Original artwork from the first week of publication. The very first Ziggy comic book came out on June 27th, 1971. So this is the seventh day after it came out. So from the first week of publication. Original artwork, that is amazing to me. I cannot believe I own this. And every time I look at it, I'm like, wow. I lucked out. The guy who sold it to me, he sold it on eBay. So it was like the right time, right place. I asked him if he had more. And he had admitted that he had previously, about a month or two earlier, sold the first artwork. Oh man, that would, that's like my number one grail. But for now, I'm thrilled to have original artwork from the first week. What a cool piece to have. I think we're going to just dive into these columns to start with. Because I really would just like to move these out and just reopen up the middle here. Just so that this whole area is kind of open. Because right now it feels a little tight. And I just, I need to get stuff out of here. So I have a lot more room to work. I also, I need to uh, start moving some comics to the back wall. To open it up this side. Uh, I might actually do one of these video series just on comics on the comic channel. But for now, let's grab one of these boxes and start digging in. All right, this box is unmarked, so I don't know if it's going to be an easy box to go through or a hard one. Let's see. Uh, ooh, it looks like a mix. All right, this vinyl Batman minifigure. I'm, I'm going to get rid of that one. Not in love with that design. Um, Han Solo can go. Generally, I can go. Oh, I really like this one, but... Uh, Prince in his really cool uh, glitter outfit. That's cool, but he can go. He can go. Uh, Pikachu. Uh, normally, I would sell this one, but he's in a leprechaun outfit, and I love leprechauns, so I'm going to keep that one. One keeper. Uh, ooh, we have a little bit of mini grail. Electro from the uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2. That's a keeper. Uh, Lando Calrissian can go. Basically, all the more common Star Wars stuff can go, and I'm just going to keep the rare older ones. Uh, Mysterio Glows in the Dark. That one's really cool, but that one can go. Love the way that one looks, though. Um, you know, there's some pops like that I'll probably regret after they sell, but I think it'll be easy to replace later on. Uh, Batman Dorbs, large size. That's a keeper. I'm basically keeping the Dorbs. The, my thought on the Dorbs, let me discuss a little bit, because I know some people are like, oh, why don't you just get rid of them? They're cheap. The fact that they are cheap means I'll be just selling them, you know, let's say I get 10 8 i mean this is limited to 1500 pieces so it's rare almost every dorb is pretty rare so the chance of actually finding them again is gonna be hard but they don't sell for a lot so what would happen is i would sell this for five or ten dollars and there's a much higher chance that this would jump up in value in like five to ten years than if um you know so i won't be able to replace it easily 
And even if the price remains cheap, it'll be hard to find again. So for me, financially, it doesn't make sense because five to $10 out of this is not going to help me that much. It might take forever. It might clog up in the store, might get damaged. I'd rather just hold on to it. And then down the road, if it does gain value, I might decide to sell it. And if it doesn't, maybe I'll just wait till I'm really ready to retire and just sell everything. Um, so like this stuff, I'm not rushing to sell stuff that I think will clog up the shop. I want stuff like the Star Wars pops, those will sell. Right. And then if I do get the space later on and I decide, you know what, I need to rebuild the collection and I need the Lando. This Lando might go to 20 bucks, might stay at $10. I don't see this pop gaining a huge ton of value over time. So that will be easier to replace. And it's common enough, whereas something like this is kind of rare. So because of its rarity, it doesn't matter what the price is. It'll be really hard to find again, especially in decent shape. Like this one's in pretty good shape. The plastic's not really scratched up. The cardboard just got a little hint of wear. So trying to replace this would just be a chore I don't want to deal with right now. And the $8 is not going to change my life. Uh, oh, giant white. I'm going to keep this one too because I do really like my 6-inch monsters. He looks amazing. And that's just one I'm keeping because I love the way it looks. Uh, oh, and like the vinyl figures, I really like the design of these figures. And it's a small enough set that I have a near complete set. And so for like $500, I could probably complete this set. So it's not like... A collectible that seems never ending and i love the way they look and they just don't really sell for much this is limited to 2500 pieces so like what is it like a 20 dollar set 30 dollar set if this is a funko pop set double set people would probably pay i don't know 200 dollars for this set so because it's vinyl and not that popular it's not really worth anything but give it time some people might come to appreciate and it might get a cult following that will go up in value so i like honestly a lot of stuff i end up collecting is kind of rarer stuff that isn't appreciated yet because that has a much higher chance to have value in the future. But because I, you know, for my whole life, I've been buying and selling collectibles and pop culture. I do like to collect not just for things I absolutely love. That's Ziggy. Like Ziggy is my, I don't want to ever sell it kind of collection. Whereas Funko Pops, I'm like, yeah, one day maybe I will part with it. But I collect for both stuff I enjoy that I think is really cool that I would love owning. And I just like the way it looks. But I also collect for value. I think collecting for value in some sense, is important because you never know. There might be a, a time where I really need to raise some money to pay an emergency or something. And so when you have stuff that's gained value, gone up in value, it's a lot easier to part with it for, you know, like if this goes up to $100 and I really, really, really need some money, I could quickly sell for 50 bucks, right? Emergency, like, like so it becomes more liquid, the rarer and the more valuable it is. And that's why I kind of like to keep the things that have more of a chance to go up in value because you know and then in the long term when i'm ready to retire and i'd spend a year or two trying to sell off everything it would be the rare stuff will be the stuff that gains the most value so collect for both joy and for value uh this one can go even though i love the double sets so i can let go of that one all right just a little bit of lesson today of professional collecting uh cat Chocula with ride dorbs ride i love that that's a keeper We have the uh, Wizard of Oz with the con sticker. Like this one's got to be just a really rare set. You probably can't find this set easily. It's not expensive, but not easy to find. So that's a keeper. And also what I find is rare stuff that has a low value. People don't appreciate it for its rarity. And they see the low value. It doesn't get taken care of. So actually a rare item that has lower value is less likely to be taken care of. So more likely to just be destroyed or damaged or lost to through attrition so that the rare stuff becomes even rarer whereas if it's a rare item that's highly valuable people put them in protectors and you know keep them perfect uh it's a small world dorb set this thing is awesome i love the dorb rides that's a keeper you know these dorb rides most people would destroy the boxes um they get beat up because they're not appreciated so i'm keeping these because i think most of these probably have like a five thousand or less print run uh, Wonder Woman with horse. That's cute. That's a keeper. Love that. Okay, box one. Uh, I didn't get rid of a ton. You know, less than half a box, but I am uh, happy to make any kind of progress at this point. <laughs> Getting rid of anything is a good thing. Okay, on to the next box. Okay, this says it's a Rick and Morty box, so this might be entirely a keeper. Okay, let's see what we got. Yep. <laughs> All Rick and Morty. We're going to go through it for the fun of it. We got Alien Rick. We have Morty, we have Squanchy, Scary Terry, love that one, like he's having a bad nightmare, <laughs> uh, Mr. Poopy Butthole, it's 
Super funny. Uh, Western Rick. That one's fun. I don't think... Is there any Grail Rick and Morty? I don't know if there's any, like, really rare, rare ones. I have to look into that. Uh, Pickle Rick with Laser. Warrior Summer. I love that one. That one's great. I wonder what the oldest ones are. I forget what the really, like, the very first one they did. Uh, Cornelius Daniel. 2017. That might be one of the older ones. Okay, let's scooch these over. Okay, we have, uh, Weaponized Rick. Pickle Rick. Uh, Alien Morty. Weaponized Morty. Rick with Portal Gun. Love that one. That might be one of the first ones. No, 2018. It's got the lowest numbers so far, I think. Uh, Squanchy with Rope. Uh, Unity. Uh, 2018. I like this one. Unity is a fun character. Okay, let me figure these out. Okay, we have uh, Western Morty. Doofus Rick, 2016. So that's one of the earliest ones, I think. This one's falling over. We have a uh, Noob Noob. Okay, we have the Flock Snowball. I really love that one. That's probably one of the, like, rarer ones, I think. We have uh, Mr. Meeseeks. Sentient Arm Morty. Uh... Rick with Portal Gun, Hot Topic exclusive, 2016. So that's another earlier one. Okay. We have uh, Kiara. Lawyer Morty. Teacher Rick. Jerry. And Hemorrhage. Okay, that's a really, really fun box. Uh, Rick and Morty is just really popular right now so since these are all contemporary to when the show's on tv i think this is the kind of thing where you know 10 12 year olds that really like the show today or in the last few years when they're like 25 they'll probably end up being willing to pay a bit for these just you know heavy nostalgia value will go into these that's why i like collecting this kind of stuff i mean i also like rick and morty but i'm holding on to it because i know there's very upside potential on these okay on the side here I have room for one, two, three, and I think this box is half full. So three and a half there. But then I have enough floor space here to have two more columns that go up all the way this way. So I have room for 16, 17, 18, 19 and a half boxes, which means I should be able to move more than those two columns over here. Plus, whatever I pull out, I'll bring over to the store later. Okay, one box away. All right, and another box put away. Okay, once I fill up two more boxes of keepers, I'm gonna have to look for some more 10 inch pops to fill up the top shelf. Next box is unlabeled, so it uh, could be keepers, it could be sellers, it could be just very random. Uh, oh, okay, there's gonna be some keepers. Although the one thing I am selling is most of my sodas I've been selling, so I am willing to get rid of all these. I don't know if they're there might be chases because there's that one point where I was only keeping chases. No, that's just a common one. But a common Chucky? Like, this will sell. I'm still trying to figure out how to put them in the store. Uh, for the longest time, I would have these little hanging bags and I'll put the figure on top. I think what I might do is just cut up some cardboard somehow and put them in a pop protector where it holds the figure on the side and then has the can on the one side. But yeah, those can go. So I'm not going to see if they're... Oh... Oh, I do like the knives out, though. Uh, I mean, not knives out. Knives, chow. Uh, Mumra. Mm. Okay. Now, you know what? I'm going to sell all my sodas. I'm going to try not to keep any. Unless it's like an absolutely favorite. Oh, Ramona Flowers. Okay. Dang it. All right, I'm going to keep the two um, Scott Pilgrim ones. <laughs> these are the very first sodas. Because these are ones I actually bought on purpose. Like, I really wanted them. I bought them on Macari, I think. Uh, big boy can go. Okay, so I'm going to keep those three sodas. I'm really trying not to keep sodas in general. Okay, hopefully we can get rid of some stuff. Oh, Corbin Dallas is a keeper. Absolutely love Fifth Element. Oh, Yennefer. 
I just love the way this pop looks, but I also love Yennefer and the Witcher. That's a cool character. Uh, Flock Doug. That's a keeper. Uh, zombie Bart. I can get rid of Zombie Bart. Uh, Venom from the Collector Core Box. I can get rid of that. Um, Nightwing. Even though I love Nightwing. Nightwing can go. Uh, Red Goblin can go. Okay, this is turning to be a pretty easy box. Uh, Raphael's a keeper, 2014. Or at least half this box, I think, will end up going. Uh, Max with Cone can go. Uh, Kool-Aid Man, Game Burst. I'm actually going to keep that one, just because I love Kool-Aid Man. And uh, Rick and Morty, I'm going to keep that. The Rick and Morty Game Burst one. We have the uh, Freddy Funko in Christmas outfit. He can go. Uh, ooh, the really cool Kamikaze Unmasked Captain America, but with an error sticker. That is neat. That's a keeper. I love my errors. Uh, Billy Butcherson, Hocus Pocus. That one can go. Uh, Funko Shop Wolverine can go. Oh, this is Fine Dog. This one's a definite keeper. You know what? I think... Uh, Jada, did I get this one from you? I think she gifted that one to me. I gotta keep that one. Love that one. Uh, ooh, Ilden, World of Warcraft, but the cool purple metallic. That's a keeper. That is a keeper. Okay. Uh, Funko Shop Bullseye, uh... I do love the Toy Story. I think I would keep that one. I do love the Toy Story aliens. The Mecha Frieza can go. Gamerverse Hulk can go. Gamorian Guard in the Black Box 2015. Uh, oh, this is the one with the really weird extended neck. I'm going to keep that one because I think that one's like an error or something's weird about that one. And then uh, Slipher the Sky Dragon. I'm going to keep that one as well. Another really cool six-inch dragon. Love it. Okay, only selling about 40% out of that box. But I actually, like I said last time, I think this is from the era when I was really cutting back and I was trying to only keep stuff I really wanted. So actually, this does not feel too bad. I feel like I got rid of a good chunk of stuff that I actually kind of wanted to keep. All right, Powerpuff Girls, Westworld, Strain, Matrix, 16 Candles. I think I'm going to be keeping more than half of this box. Okay, let's look in here. Uh, yeah, like I know all the Matrix are definite keepers. We have uh, Agent Smith. Love that one. Morpheus, that's a keeper. Trinity, definitely a keeper. Uh, Neo's a keeper. Another Trinity. Why do I have two Trinities? It must be a... Uh, oh, yeah, you know what it is? A lot of these had two glass variants where one's more translucent and one's a little bit less translucent. So I think a lot of these are going to have two variants. Uh, Powerpuff Girls are all going to be keepers. Blossom. Love the Powerpuff Girls. Bubbles. Uh, Mojo Jojo. Keeper. Uh, Amina, she's just cool looking. Love that one. That's a keeper. I was like, I'm going to sell her, but no, she's cool looking. Uh, Buttercup's a keeper. Uh, let's see. Dr. F from Good Weather and uh, uh, I'm going to keep Vaughn because he's like a creepy, cool looking creature, but Dr. F from can go. Yeah, this box is not good for partying with stuff. Uh, Maeve from Westworld, that's a keeper. Love Westworld. You know, I love any like AI characters. Musashi, so Westworld is such a great show. Uh, Teddy is a keeper. At this point, uh, I don't think there's anything else I'm going to sell in here. <laughs> I'll show you, though. We have Dolores. Super cool. We have uh, the Master. This one is just so creepy, but I kind of love it. Uh, Musashi with the shared sticker. That's a keeper. Blossom's a keeper. Uh, Dr. Robert Ford's a keeper. Him. That's a keeper. Uh, let's see. Agent Smith, that's a keeper. Let me see if I can find the other one in a second. Uh, Men in Black, that's a keeper. 
put these over. We got the Him Chase. That's a keeper. Buttercup's a keeper. Bernard's a keeper. Jeffrey Wright. He's like one of my all-time favorite actors. Uh, Dolores with the Consticker. She's a keeper. That one's really cool looking. Bubbles is a keeper. Abraham. He can go. I'm not like a big fan of the strain, so he can go. All right, we got two. <laughs> two is, I guess, better than none, but not a lot. Okay, and then uh, I just didn't do the Young Ford, I think. So, and then we have Young Ford. Okay, a lot of keepers, but you know what? At least I can put this box over to the side, put it away, and open up the middle room here. <laughs> okay, on to the next box. Oh, yeah, you can see this a lot clearer. So this Agent Smith, very clear glasses. These ones are only slightly clear. Uh, this is, let's see, June 2015, and this is January 2015. So five months apart, they changed the glasses on all the different figures. So I ended up keeping a set of both. We're getting into some of the older stuff. I just, it's going to be a lot harder. I think they go through the rest of these boxes and find a lot I really want to get rid of. Uh, Teen Titans Go, I'm pretty sure this is all keepers. All right, let's see what we got. Yeah, Teen Titans Go. Teen Titans Go is all keepers. First of all, Teen Titans are one of my favorite DC properties. Uh, Raven as Wonder Woman, that's a keeper. Uh, these are all keepers. We're just going to go through them. Um, so I, the comics I love. The um, the original early 2000s cartoon I absolutely love. Teen Titans Go, like, it's more for little kids, but it was funny. So I have nostalgia watching it with my son when he was little. He doesn't like it now, but I feel like this uh, run of figures will have a lot of nostalgia value. So... 10, 15 years from now, these will have some value. Killer Moth. And by value, you know, 50, 100 bucks a piece as kids are probably like 12, 14 now that grew up with these maybe five years ago when these came out. No, these came out uh, eight years ago. So those kids are like 16, 14, 16, 18 in that range. So give it like 10 years, these will become really nostalgic. And some of them, you know, some people will start buying them because they'll be their childhood or even... Rose Wilson, and just, I, I love them. I think they're super cool. Robin as Nightwing, original Beast Boy, uh, Robin as Batman, uh, original Raven, and, you know, some of the, like, um, original Robin, some of these do already have some value to them. Uh, Starfire as Batgirl, love that one. Robin as Red X Unmasked. Jinx, Cyborg as Green Lantern, Raven in her pink outfit with a Toys R Us sticker, uh, Raven as Lady Legacies, Hot Topic exclusive, uh, Blackfire with a Toys R Us sticker. I love the Toys R Us sticker ones. That's also nostalgia. Uh, the Flocked Bear, Toys R Us sticker. Toys R Us stickers are also Super nostalgic. Uh, the regular bear, unflocked. Starfire as the Flash. Uh, Beast Boy as Martian Manhunter. We have Robin as Red X. Robin as Red X. Is this the same one? So I have two. I am just curious why I have two. Are these different printings? No, same printing. So one of these must be an error of some sort. Uh, I cannot tell. Maybe just the way the paint is around the eye. I decided to grab, you know, each variant because the eye paint is slightly different. And I'm, you know, I love Teen Titans, so I'll be a little bit more likely to get. When I was keeping all the different variants I could find on Pops, I really loved a small variant I would have kept more easily. Uh, Raven in her orange outfit. Whereas if it was like a Pop I wasn't that excited for, I probably would not have kept that small variant. A regular Raven. Which is that? Do I have two of her as well? Why do I have two Ravens? These are about a year apart in printing. Oh yeah, so it's basically her skin tone is lighter here and this is more of the gray tone that she's supposed to be. So it's a paint variant. Uh, Glows in the Dark Raven, Toys R Us sticker. That was really neat. 
Trigon and Mammoth. Okay, sweet box. This is, you know, I'm not sad at all that I didn't pull out anything to sell because I really, really do like this set. This is a great set of Funko Pops. Chris made it says, I know many are easy to replace, but it hurts me a little watching you get rid of so many. I never sold pieces from my collection, whatever I collected. I thought this was a great comment to talk about a little bit. I mean, it does hurt a little bit when you're selling your collection. Um, in this case, I'm selling because I want more room to be able to do more videos. So the, the pain I'm feeling, I'm getting rewarded by being able to make more content. And the reason why I really started collecting so many Funko Pops was to make content. But I got to the point where I had so many, I couldn't make the content. So it, it was kind of like a catch-22. So like... Uh, it's a little bit upsetting getting rid of all of them because it is a really fun collection. But I'm keeping so many amazing grails and more expensive ones that I'm not going to feel the loss that much because what I'm getting rid of, I'll be able to replace. Now, I understand the idea of you never sold anything, so it's hard. So you just feel the pain of maybe parting with things. I honestly think every collector should try to purge a little bit at some point because it's something that just needs to be done. It's like a beautiful garden. If you have a beautiful garden, but you never weed it, it just gets overgrown. So you kind of have to learn how to purge a little bit occasionally. It makes it, I think it's better to be a collector who knows how to put some stuff on eBay, how to put some stuff on Macari, how to sell stuff at a garage sale. I'm not saying give it away, not saying clear it out, not throw it away at a comic shop for pennies on the dollar. What I'm saying is Find a way to sell a little bit. Prune your collection. Go through your collection. There's got to be duplicates or things you decided. You know what? I don't really like that anymore. There's always something that you can get rid of. And in my case, I'm doing the hard work now of selling the cheaper stuff or the stuff I don't think will gain in value. That's work, right? So it's not fun. This whole process is not that fun for me. The video making is what's making it fun. So I do the videos so that I can find something that I really enjoy so that I don't have to just focus on the selling part, which I don't want to do, which is like the emotional, oh my God, I don't want to part with the stuff. I still love it. I, I don't want it. So the, the filming part is where I'm finding my joy, but I'll show you what part of the end result is. In the last year, I spent $4,400 on Daredevil number one and a 5.0. This has been one of my grail items. This has been high on my want list for something like 30 years since the early 90s. And so I never thought I would own it. So the thing is, I'm selling out a lot of cheap $8, $10, $20 items. It's easy to collect $8, $10 items. Because when you spend 50 bucks on five items, you don't really feel it. It's hard to spend $4,400 on a single item. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the hard work of selling the cheap items. And the result is I'm getting something that would be hard to get normally, just saving up for this. I'm selling that stuff and I'm turning it into these hard rare rails. And so I'm pruning my collection like a beautiful garden. And what's left is this beautiful flower, this beautiful tree, this beautiful bush for my collection where now instead of having you know at ten dollars a piece that's uh let's see 30 pops per box so 300 dollars a box so 15 so two of the giant columns behind me of cheap 10 dollar pops is now converted into a single item that fits in the room a lot easier than two giant columns and i love this so much more than the ten dollar stuff like i want to hug it like this is something that brings me so much joy so it's just like having this or a bunch of $10 stuff I kind of like, but maybe I don't like that much. Or or I've decided, you know, I'm happy to, to get rid of it. Or maybe I like it enough that I can replace it later. I can always get a $10 item again. Daredevil number one? I don't know. I also think it's a good store of value. I, I bought this about a year ago. It hasn't lost value in that year. A lot of other comics have lost value. This one has not. Uh, there's a television series coming out soon. So maybe people will pay up a little bit more on this. It could gain value. I think over time this will gain value. So i rather store value in things like this. That I think have better upside potential. That are um, just really enjoys. Also this item is a lot more liquid. If I like have an emergency. And I need to come up with a lot of money. If I you know try to get rid of two of those giant columns behind me. Of Funko Pops at $10 a piece. That could be months of work. Be really hard to find buyers. If I needed some quick, I might get a dollar or two instead of ten dollars each. Whereas this, like, I could probably get close to full value pretty quickly if I posted it and said, "Hey, I have Daredevil number one. Someone want to give me four grand? I'd sell it in an instant. Thirty-eight hundred dollars instantly sold. Forty-four hundred dollars might take me a day, but I'm sure I could find a buyer for it. So this is a lot more of a liquid asset than a whole pile of cheaper items. So hopefully by the time I'm done this round of purging. I end up with like 10 items like this instead of 
giant piles like this. So when you're selling a collection, you gotta look for the little rewards that can help you sell the collections better. Whether it's making a video so you enjoy the process more or you know, getting a really cool collectible with all the money you get from selling the stuff that you wanna get rid of. Also in uh, 2006, my uh, wife and I, we had a collection of probably about six, 7,000 DVDs, like two giant walls covered. Uh, we sold them at the peak of value because that was really before Blu-rays and HD DVDs. But I saw the writing on the wall that HD DVD and Blu-ray were going to like come out and kind of compete. So I was like, you know what? I got to sell this collection because I know the prices were going to tank. And we sold them at the peak. And I spent, we probably made $100,000 on that collection. We put most of it into the, over at the store during the construction. But I also spent probably about twenty to $30,000 worth of retro toys. So buried in this side room is a lot of stuff I bought in 2005 that, you know, like carded G.I. Joe figures I paid $50, $100 for that are worth $500, $1,000 dollars. So the twenty or thirty thousand that I spent by selling the cheap DVDs that I had has converted into probably more value overall than if I had kept those DVDs. If I had kept the DVDs, I would have lost all the value. Okay, this box says Gargoyles, Care Bear, Strawberry Shortcake, Rainbow Bright, Rainbow Bright, Strawberry Shortcake. I am keeping those are some of my wife's favorites. Uh, Care Bears and Gargoyles. I think those can go. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, yeah, I think all the gargoyles I am willing to part with. Again, unless any of them are like $7,500, those I'll end up keeping. But I think most of these are still relatively cheap. Uh, Good Luck Bear Chase. That one's awesome. Oh, I do love Shamrocks. I think I'm going to keep that one just because I'm a, you know, Leprechaun Shamrock fan. Uh, Broadway can go. Strawberry Shortcake Double Pack. New York Comic Con exclusive. That one's awesome. That's a keeper. Oh, I'm a Halloween fan, too. Oh, no. I might keep that one as well. That's hard. Okay. Uh, Tender Bear can go. That one can go. Okay, I'm not going to keep all the Care Bears. Just my favorite ones. Uh, Angela can go. Funshine Bear can go. Those might have a bit of value. Uh, Brooklyn can go. Blueberry Muffin's a keeper. Uh, Demona can go. Orange Blossom's a keeper. Uh, regular Demona, she can go. Uh, ooh, the Grinch. No, that's just, oh, I thought it was the Grinch. No, it's a Care Bear. All right, Christmas Care Bear can go. Okay. I like Care Bears. Uh, Love a Lot Bear can go. Um, the Hudson and Bronx Double Pack. That's a, I mean, that can go. The American Care Bears can go. Uh, lemon meringue and frappe is a keeper. Uh, purple pie man is a keeper. Uh, Hudson can go. Strawberry shortcake's a keeper. Grumpy bear flocked. I think I'm gonna keep that one just because he's flocked. I love my flocked pups. Uh, Rainbow bright's a keeper. That one, I think, got pretty expensive. That one might be like 75 bucks. Uh, Chair Bear can go. Uh, Angela Chase can go. Goliath can go. I do really like the Gargoyles, but I'm, you know, I'm willing to part with all these because I think I'll be able to get them again. The thing with these is these aren't contemporary, right? Gargoyles came out in, what, the 90s? So this is a toy aimed at, like, a 35-year-old adult nostalgia Stuff like that, I always say, really doesn't have much room to go up in value. Because if these, you know, if someone who loved gargoyles as a kid, if these really start gaining in value, or if they're going to spend a lot of money on a gargoyle property, they're probably going to look for original stuff from the 90s, stuff from their childhood. Not, you know, something that was made for when they were 30 years old. Okay, I'm really happy that for a sale box, uh, you know, it's more than half is going. Pretty successful box. All right, this box says Hikari, Mini Hikari, and Mini Pops. I'm pretty sure I'm keeping most of this. Okay, let's see what we got. Uh, yeah, these are keepers. Uh, Demogorgon Chase, that's a keeper. That's cool. I love these little mini double sets, the vintage ones. I mean, they're not vintage, but they're 11 years old now. Ursula and Ariel, that is super dope. I don't know what these are worth at the moment, but I always thought these were underappreciated. They might have gone up in value, though, the last year or so. I haven't really looked since. Um, Tully and Mike, I love that. That's cool. Then we have 
some of these little Hikari Darth Vader's. Blue, red, and uh, Freddy Funko. Those are fun. I love the mini peanut set of four. I think this came out right around when the movie came out, 2015. Uh, oh, and a whole bunch of Hikari. What do we got? We got the um, golden Transformer. That's amazing. I still really, really like the Hikari line. The really cool looking Frankenstein. We have a uh, Ninja Turtle. Yeah, and these are like limit 600,000, 3,000. If those are Funko Pops, these would be like $1,000 each practically. It's crazy how undervalued these are. Um, limited edition 1,000, really awesome red Boba Fett. I love when toys are made with just like a metallic red look. Looks so freaking dope. Uh, the cool golden Spider-Man. Absolutely love that one. We have limited to 88. One of the mythical uh, Asian creature monster guys. That one's dope. This one I think has a little bit of value just because of its rarity. 88 is such a small print run. Uh, we have this really awesome looking Iron Man. Love the patina look of him. That one is amazing. And finally, last one in this box. Oh, Stay Puffed. Love the Stay Puffed. This is so much nicer than the Funko Pop with the Stay Puffed. I love that one. Awesome figure. This is one set if I ever get the channel going again and like... I have a little revenue coming in from it. I would complete. I would really try to find all the Hikari out there that I don't have. Just because I love it. It's such a great set. I think the values have started to climb up a little bit, though. So not the easiest set to get. Plus, most of them are pretty limited. All right, this one says Walking Dead. You know I can't part with those. Uh, Silicon Valley. I don't think I'm going to part with that either because I love that show. Uh, Street Fighter, I think I can get rid of. And what is that? Dumbo? I think Dumbo I can get rid of. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, it's not even a full box. Okay. Okay. Akuma, we can get rid of that one. A Ken, we can get rid of. Oh, Gilfoy. <laughs> That's a keeper. I really like this show, especially, you know, how it ended with the whole AI story. It feels so much more relevant today, even, compared to when was that, five years ago? Oh, Chun Li's a keeper, though. Love Chun Li. Uh, Toys R Us, Negan's a keeper. Uh, Ken can go. Uh, Michonne's a keeper. Street Fighter Dan can go. I mean, I do love Street Fighter, but I feel like most of these I'll be able... Like, every time I get them in the store, they sit... They don't sell really well. They're only like $10, $15. So I'm not really worrying about it. I think those I'll be able to replace. Uh, Cami, I will keep, though. We'll keep the female characters. Oh, Dinesh. Love Dinesh. <laughs> That's a keeper. I love that show. It's such a good show. Oh, Sasha, too. Like, she had such a great zombification death in the show. That's definitely a keeper for me. Uh, Ehrlich. That's a keeper. I like how his eyes are all, like, stoner red. <laughs> uh, Ryu. Super cool Toys R Us sticker, but that can go. Right, let me clear these. Okay, you know, I thought this box was going to be a lot more keepers. Um, I mean, I'm keeping a lot, but I feel like I'm getting rid of a good healthy chunk. Hot Ryu, this is the Asia version. Uh, I'm going to double check. If this one has a high value, I will keep him. But if he's like 20 bucks or less, I'll probably sell him. Uh, Dan can go. Ryu can go. I just The Asia ones are going to be a lot harder to replace later. Balrog, again, if it's a higher price, I will uh, keep them. Um, Bloody Maggie, that one's got quite a bit of value, I think. So that's a keeper. Walking Dead, all the Walking Deads are keepers. Ooh, Woodbury Walker, that one's awesome. All of the uh, Walking Deads are keeper, those. Uh, T-Dog, okay, let me clear these. Okay, what we have? We have uh, regular Balrog. That one can go. We have, uh, oh, Jared. <laughs> He's got the Pied Piper jacket on. I love that. That's a keeper. Let's see. Yeah, Chun Li. Regular Chun Li. That's a keeper. We have a uh, Well Walker. I love this one where he splits in half. That's a cool pop. That's a keeper. We have Dwight. That's a keeper. Wow, there's a lot of Street Fighter ones. Blanca. That one can go. And. Uh, Ryu. Again, this is the Asia version, though, so I might end up keeping that one if it's more expensive. 
like a lot more if it's twenty dollars or less i'll sell but if it's like 35 40 i'll probably keep it just because it'll be rare or hard to get again uh my keeper of pile is exactly half a box that's actually a very successful box let's see this is uh ducktails tailspin chippendale goof troop goofy ted i think most of these i can get rid of the ones i would keep are the ducktail ones so i absolutely love ducktails open up uh oh okay uh kick cloud kicker tailspin i can let go of that one uh webby is a keeper oh uh. that one's hard i don't think it's worth much but i do love monterey jack i think i would keep monterey jack um scrooge mcduck's definitely a keeper love scrooge Huey's a keeper. Uh, this box is going to be a little bit harder than I thought. Scrooge McDuck and his pile of gold is a keeper. Uh, Goslin, uh, that's a keeper. Magic of Dispel is a keeper. And I don't think any of these are super valuable. Uh, Shurkan sure can go, even though I really like that one. Ted. Ted, I think, has a little bit of value, but he's going to go... I'm going to double-check him. If he's, like, 50 bucks, I'd keep him. If he's 30, I'll probably sell him. Louie is a keeper. Dewey's a keeper. Okay, round... Or the bottom half looks more like the later... Like, the 87, 88 series are the ones that I watched when I was, like, 11, 12. Uh, Tailspin, that can go. But then you get into the early 90s. I'm not as connected. Uh, ooh. Chippendale... The Flocked, really... I, you know what? I think I can part with that one. Even though I love Flocked. And I love double sets. I think I can part with those ones. It just, it's just them, so it's the older versions of them. Not the uh, 80s version where they're in their little coats. Uh, Wildcat Chase can go. Okay, that's good. Uh, Baloo Flocked. He looks freaking cool. All right, I'm going to keep that one just because he's cool looking. Oh, Darkwing Duck, or not Darkwing Duck, but uh, Negatron from Darkwing, that's a keeper. Uh, Baloo can go. The Max Chase can go. See, the Goof Troop stuff, that's a little bit later. That's like early 90s. By then, I wasn't really watching cartoons anymore. Uh, Louis Chase can go. I do really like the gizmo. Ah, uh, you know what? I could sell him, though, because I've gotten him a bunch of times. And even though he's like 20, 30 bucks, I think I can replace him. But Darkwing Duck's a keeper. Keep the ducks. Uh, Powerline can go. Oh, the Flocked Head. Now, that's the keeper one, because that's the cool Flocked one. I love that one. The other Ted, though, I think I can let go of that one. Again, I have to double-check pricing, though. Some of them might be expensive. Ooh, Monterey Jack Chase. Yeah, that's a keeper. Uh, oh, this box just feels harder. Uh, Max can go. Wildcat can go. And uh, Louie can go. Okay, let's see how successful this was. I actually thought I was going to keep more than that. So, um, you know, I'm getting rid of more than half. One more than half. That is actually a successful box. Okay, this one is... Uh... Naruto and Dragon Ball. I think most of these I'll end up selling, actually. Okay, let's see what's in here. Uh, okay, I do see a couple of keepers. But yeah. Wiz can go. Perfect Cell can go. Uh, that Perfect Cell can go. Uh, I am keeping this one, Harry Potter. Love that one. Uh, six inch creatures. You know I love those, so I'm keeping the great ape Vegeta. Uh, is this one of the rare earlier ones? Uh, I have to double check. If this one is like 80, 90 bucks, I'm probably keeping it. If it's fallen or if it's like 50 bucks, I might sell that one. That was one of those uh, Black Friday box ones. Uh, Goku, I think I can sell that one. I already thought I sold a lot of my Dragon Ball Z. I'm actually surprised I still have so much left. So, Master Roshi, uh, Frieza, Final Form. Okay, these all can go. Sun Goku can go. Okay, we have... Uh, Gotenks can go. Uh, Master Roshi can go. Uh, Bulma, I'll keep. I like Bulma. She's cool. 
Um, Vegeta, this is also that Black Friday box. I think that one can go. I have to double check if the blue one is worth a lot or not. Uh, Final Form Frieza can go. Zen O can go. Uh, Goku Flying Nimbus can go. I, I feel like a lot of these they've overproduced because I've had them many times and they've never really gone up in value, Master Roshi. So most of these I think are still in like the 10 to $20 range for the most part, except for those Black Friday ones. Uh, Tien and Shiatsu. That one can go. We have a different Bulma. That's a keeper. And we have a uh, Majin Buu. That one can go. And then we have the two Shenrons, which I will keep. I really do love my six-inch dragons. So we have the all-gold Shenron. That one is really cool looking. Love that one. That one's amazing. And then we have just the... Uh, was it Galactic Toys exclusive regular Shenron? That's also a keeper. Okay, that box was super successful. More than half are going. Pretty sure all the Lord of the Rings are keepers. Uh, Game of Thrones, only the rare ones or uh, just some of my favorite ones. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's going to be hard because I know all the Lord of the Rings I want to keep. Gollum's keeper. Um, Nazgul's keeper. Uh, Ramsey Bolton. I think I can let that one go. Oh yeah, Saruman. Love Christopher Lee. That's a that's a must keep, must keep for me. Uh, the George R R Martin one's really cool, but he can go. I do like when they do uh, writers and directors as pops. Uh, Sauron's a keeper. Oh, and I think I have both versions. Yeah, one's more metallic and one's a little bit more just grayish. Two different printings. 2014, 2015. Those are cool keepers. Uh, Jamie Lannister can go. Ooh, I love this one. The clear photo baggins. That's a keeper. Okay, we have a Boromir. That's a keeper. Ooh, we have a uh, Light Fury pop culture one. That's cool. Gonna keep that. I like the dragons. Uh, Gollum's a keeper. Gimli's a keeper. Frodo Baggins is a keeper. Oh man, these Lord of the Rings ones are awesome. Uh, King Aragorn is a keeper. Uh, Sansa Stark. She, uh, I love it. She's just a really cute looking pup. That's a keeper. Uh, Peter Baelish can go. Oops, I'm mixing up my keepers and my sellers. Uh, Legolas is the keeper. Lurt is a keeper. Uh, the Invisible Bilbo Baggins, that one's awesome. That's like a semi-grail, that's a keeper. Uh, Witch King, that one's a really dope looking one, that's a keeper. Okay, we have, uh, the Gollum Chase, where he's holding the fish. That's a keeper. Uh, this is one of my all-time favorite pops, the Dunharrow King, just like the translucent parts and the skull. Like, it just looks so freaking dope. Love that one. Uh, Bran Stark can go. I actually didn't even know I had uh, Game of Thrones left. I thought I sold most of my Game of Thrones. Uh, Twilight Ringwrath, that's a cool looking one too. That's a keeper. We have the Grishnok. That's a keeper. And we have Gandalf. That's a keeper. I love that one. Oh, and then we have the the box that has the really nice uh, Galadriel in it, I think. Yeah, on the top it has like a little mystery mini. Kind of cool packaging, actually. Yeah, and here, we'll open it up. Yeah, we have the Galadriel and the Gollum. We have the Translucent Golem, Barnes & Noble exclusive, super cool, and the really fun Ghostly Galadriel. Love that one. That one is awesome. All right, awesome box. Almost all keepers, but I kind of knew that going into this box. Um, did pull out five, though, so made a little bit of progress on this box. Uh, this one has the Colson Lola, which is a fun a Batmobile. Oh, this one's going to have rides in it, I think. 
this might be uh, some sellers, some keepers. Oh, we have some grails too. We have Barney Rubble, which is kind of a grail. That's a keeper for sure. Uh, Chase Batman Pez. That one I can let go of. I can go. I really, really, really do love these Freddy Funko vinyl figures. So cute. That's a keeper. And this one's a keeper. Absolutely love those. Oh, uh, the lock, shock, and barrel set is absolutely amazing. <sighs> I'm pretty sure I can get it again, though. So I'm going to let that one go. That one's a little bit of a tough decision, but... I don't think that's one going up in value anytime soon. They would have to do like a uh, Nightmare Before Christmas second movie and then people will go crazy. Uh, Georgie and the Drain, though. I absolutely love this one. Another toy in a raincoat. I think I have to keep that one. <laughs> oh, no. I'm keeping a big obnoxious set. No. Okay. Oh, yeah. This is one of the rare Batmobiles. This is the uh, silver chrome one. That's a keeper. Again, this is based on a 1970s tin toy where they did different colorways, including a silver Batmobile. That one is really cool, actually. That's a keeper for sure. Oh, the Mad Max style Rick and Morty car. That one is super cool, too. That's a keeper. Yeah, the Lola, I'm definitely keeping. This is a rare Marvel ride. So, Director Coulson with Lola. That's a keeper. And then, uh, oh, I do. Uh, I think I'm going to keep this one because I have all the other Cowboy Bebop Pops and I kept them all. Yeah, I think I can. I mean, I, I think I'm going to keep that one. Just because that one, I think, would be a little bit harder to get l later on. I don't think they made a ton of them. Okay. Ooh, that box was not very successful at all. Just one item. <laughs> Two items. <laughs> Minecraft and Five Nights at Freddy. I don't think I'm getting rid of any of these. This is the stuff that kids love. So this is all nostalgia stuff. These are... Uh, some of these are actually already kind of pricey, I think. Okay, Funtime Foxy. And I don't even know. Did the movie send the prices up? They probably did. Uh, Funtime Freddy Chase. Flaming Skeleton. Now, if you know a kid, Roblox, FNAF, and Minecraft. They've all played it. Uh, Alex Enchanted Armor. Uh, Funtime Freddy. Dark Springtrap. Uh, Ballora Chase. Lefty. Springtrap Glows in the Dark. Shadow Freddy. And this is definitely not my generation, but my son... Really enjoys Five Nights at Freddy's, so that's his generation there. Uh, Alex. Jump Scare Foxy. Uh, Nightmare Foxy. LOL Bit. Foxy the Pirate. Toys R Us exclusive. Uh, Steven Diamond Armor. Uh... Jack Obani, Glows in the Dark. Uh, LOL Bit, the con sticker version. Uh, Toy Freddy. Steve and Gold Armor. Okay, let me clear these. We got uh, Steve and Enchanted Armor. We got a Glow in the Dark Creeper. Jump Scare Baby. Ocelot, Charged Creeper, Nightmare Cupcake, Bon Bon, Spring Trout. Oh, that's a fun flocked one. That's a dope looking one. And a Creeper. So yeah, all Keepers, not a single seller in that box. Uh, when my son's 25 and I'm like 60, yeah, that's when we'll think about selling these. Or maybe he'll want to keep them as a collector, as an adult. I realize I have a little bit of space right here. I want to fill up before I finish this row. I got three more boxes that I can put right there. All right, I think this box will fit. I, I, some kind of Final Fantasy toy. I'm not 100% sure what it is. Something I haven't looked at in forever. Uh, 
Oh, this is from that animated movie that came out in the late, uh, like, 99, I think. Oh, that's interesting. Does it open up? Oh, yeah. Oh, that figure looks really cool. Okay, I'm going to put that in that space. And then I think I'm going to put this case of Monster High dolls there. Let me, uh, I'm going to look in the case. Yes, I believe that's a complete case of them. I, uh, back in the day, I was buying cases for my shop. And I'd pull out two of each, the two nicest looking one for my collection. So we have uh, Venus Flytrap. Don't know what these are worth, but I know a lot of Monster High stuff has really just skyrocketed in value the last few years. So I have two copies of those. I would look to make sure the doll looked the nicest in the box. Like the hair is the nicest and all that. We have the Claudine Wolf. So I got two of those. I should have two of pretty much every Monster High doll that came out from 2010 to 2017, I think, or 2016. And then I have the Abby Abominable. All should lo also have like the nicest looking hair, the nicest just pose in the box. I just looked at each one and I tried to pick out the nicest one out of the six of each or whatever I got. Um, these got to have some value though. I wouldn't be surprised if these are at least like $50 each. Yeah, just looking on eBay now, they look like they go for like 40 to 75 maybe. Yeah, but I'm not rushing to sell these. These are long-term holds. Let's look. Uh, hmm. Might be a lot more keepers than I think. Uh, Happy from Fairy Tale. I'm keeping that one because I like the uh, characters cute. Uh, all the Bendy and the Ink Machines are keepers. Again, long term value potential. Alice Angel, love that one. That one's great. Uh, Tiffany can go. Tiffany Chase, yeah, that one can go. That's going to sell really well, though. People love the Chucky ones. Uh, Kurt Cobain. I think that one can go. I mean, I love Nirvana. That one's kind of pricey, but I I don't think it's going up in value anytime soon. So it's going to stay at that, like, somewhere between $50 and $75 value, I think. If it's over 100 though, I'll end up keeping it. Uh, Chucky can go. Uh, Jack Crawford from Hannibal can go. Okay, this is good. Kurt Cobain again. Ah. Oh. I mean, I'm a Nirvana kid, right? I was nine when he died. I was, uh, was a first year of college, last year of high school. Mm, ah, I'm gonna keep them. <laughs> this one I think I'll regret if I sell it. I can only sell them again later, right? Once you sell it, it's done. But if you haven't sold it yet, you can still sell it. Uh, Piper from Bendy's a keeper. Oh, more Lost Boys. We have David from Lost Boys. He's got his uh, Chinese food container there. That's a keeper. Oh, uh, Helena from Black Orphan. I really like that one. That's a keeper. Okay, this is going to be a little bit harder than I thought. Mm -hmm. Okay, Boris the Wolf is a keeper. Uh, Rachel Duncan's a keeper. Striker from Bendy is a keeper. Bendy from Bendy is a keeper. Uh, I think this is the regular Tiffany, not the Chase. Yeah, that one can go. Uh, okay, well, we have another fairy tale one. We have the uh, Gajil. That's a keeper. I just think he looks really cool. We have uh, Bendy Doll. That's a keeper. Uh, original Chucky. That one. I think I can let that go unless he's expensive. Like if he's forty bucks, I'll let him go. But if he's seventy-five, I'll probably keep him. Uh, Hot Topic Chucky. Same thing. Uh, Two thousand fourteen. Uh, I don't know. The thing is, he's going to sell really, really well. But 2014 is going to be a lot harder to replace. Uh, all right, again, if he's under 50, he's for sale. If he's above 50, I'll probably keep him. Uh, another Chucky. So that must be a paint variant or a box variant. I'm going to let him go. Uh, Alice Angel. That one's a great looking pop. That's a keeper. Uh, the Nun, I can let go. Uh, Sarah Manning, I love this pop. This one looks great. That's a keeper. The Nun Demonic. That one's so freaking creepy, but that one can go. I do really like this, but those can go. Okay, let me clear these. This is the kind of box that I just, I want to keep it all. So it's the kind of box that really just gives me anxiety or 
like stress. Al's Angel's the keeper. The good thing is like Bendy and the Ink Machine, I don't think any of these are suit, like maybe some of them are 40 bucks, but they're not like hundreds of dollars yet. So I just like, it's not like I would make a lot of money anyway. Oh, we got Michael Emerson, Lost Boys. All right, I love that. That's a keeper. Uh, Vampire David, oh, that one's awesome too. That's a keeper. Another Kurt Cobain, that's a keeper. And uh, Allison Hendricks, Four from Black. I love the orphan black ones. They're great. Okay. Um, I don't know if that was that successful. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going to keep that one. Hot Topic, Bloody Chucky. That's the one that's going to be the hardest to replace. The common one should be easier. Ooh, that was a tough box. But you know what? I still got rid of eight. I might keep one more Chucky. Not sure. I'm just, I think I'm just going to keep the Hot Topic one. Uh, ooh, that was a rough box though. I almost want to call it quits, but I still, I need the finish. I got to do a lot today. We're still going to keep going. Okay, I got rid of the two columns I had moved in the way. So this really opened up the space. I have room for 10 more boxes on the side. I think I'll wait to do those columns to, for the next video because I'm really tired and I'm getting kind of mentally blocked and I want to be able to get rid of more. So those we're going to do next. Uh, but I promised you guys we would take the plastic down. So let's do that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to fix the light so we can kind of see what's going on over here. Okay, so I'm over here. I had originally taped it up. And, but it's fallen down over the years. So, um, yeah, let me move some of this loose stuff so nothing falls on me. And then we're going to take down the plastic. This is a dead gorgeous case. Empty pool of doll boxes. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Gamora sideshow figure. Really cool figure. All right, this box says non-Ziggy. So let's uh let's take a quick peek at it. All right, this box hasn't been touched in probably 12 years. <laughs> Dusty. Okay, all right, let's see what we got. Uh Oh, okay. Looks like very early uh 2000 stuff. Buzz Lightyear shampoo, never used. All right, let me get this up higher. Uh I realize this is Allison's collection. We have a uh, Queen Amidala shampoo unused. A, uh, do we, is it full? Oh. <laughs> uh, double noodle Buzz Lightyear unopened can of soup. <laughs> okay. Yikes. Uh, chicken noodle unopened can of soup. Expired, uh, can't, I can't tell the date on that. Uh, it's like The Walking Dead trying to live on that. Oh, and a um, unopened sealed box from 2002 of Buzzed Blast. That is awesome with the little alien. Allison was collecting all the little Toy Story alien stuff we could find. That's actually, I wonder what that's worth. 30, 35 bucks sealed. We paid four bucks. So that's what, about a thousand percent return? <laughs> That's neat. That's really neat. Okay, and then this looks like it's just a bag full of... Uh, oh, this is just a Disney Store catalog, so this would have Toy Story stuff in it. That's actually really cool. Such a time capsule from, like, the early 2000s. Toy Story books. Uh, a Toy Fair magazine. That one is probably mine. Oh, but with the really cool uh, Herculoids toys on the back. Those are cool. Um, some 50 cent Toy Story 2 uh, coloring books we bought on sale at some kind of bargain store. More early Disney store catalogs. I wonder what these are worth. Let's see. They seem to sell pretty regularly around five bucks. Could recycle it, but I kept it. <laughs> now we have $5 bills. Oh, and this is mine. We have some uh, Richie Rich color change stickers. Really lowbrow. There's not a lot of Richie Rich stuff out there, but I do really love Richie Rich. Okay, fun little vintage box. I think this is technically vintage now because it's over 20 years old. Okay, let's get the plastic down. Holy crap.
This is such a collectible time capsule. Wow, there's so much in here. Look at all these bins of stuff. I cannot wait to dig in here with you guys because this is going to be amazing. So yeah, I don't, can't really see, but I got shelves full in here. This basically is a 10 by 10 room full of just bins of cool old stuff. Pretty much all our collecting that Allison and I did from 98 to uh, 2011. Something like that. Wow, this is going to be really fun to dig through. So yeah, I got to finish going through all the Funko stuff over there. Just, I need room in here to work. But once we do that, this is going to be a whole Time Capsule Vintage Toy series. I think this is probably like a 5 to 10 part series just on its own. Once we start digging through some of those bins, I think it's going to be amazing.